Hello everyone and welcome to the deep dive session for the front end testing. In this session, we'll be going over how the front end testing pipeline works and the testing decorators. Finally, we'll have a quick look at some of the front end function tests in IB. If you are new to testing, we recommend watching our previous video about IB testing first. Without further ado, let's dive right in. To begin, let's use a simple example to explain how to test a torch front end function. For simplicity, we're going to assume we are testing the apps function, which is short for absolute. This function takes in a parameter called input, which is basically an array. In our front ends, we try to replicate the implementation of torchwood apps using IV. In this way, we can call the torchwood apps function using any backend we would like to use. Now we're going to assume we are uh, using a PyTorch front end and also an IV torch front end with this flow as a backend. So you can see that we import the torch framework and we also import the torch front end from IV and we set the backend to be TensorFlow. In this way, we can actually call um, the torch, the IV torch front end function using TensorFlow as a backend. Now the testing pipeline ensures that our front end behaves in the same way as the original framework, regardless of the backend we are using. This pipeline consists of four primary steps. First, we generate the test data, as we previously discussed in our testing deep dive session. And then we begin pre-processing the generated data. In the case of the front end testing, this includes converting the generated data to the IV array or to the, and also to the original framework um, array. Now, the next step is to execute the function with the generated arguments. And you can see here the text execution step. We basically use the generated arguments from the previous step and call the IV torch front end framework. And we also call the torch uh, original framework function call using our um, using generated data. Now, finally, we assert that return value are almost close to what we generated from our front end and also from the original framework. We may also perform additional checks, like asserting that the D-type is equal and also asserting that the device is equal. Now, let's take a closer look at the front end testing decorators. We will discuss why we need these decorators in more detail later. It's worth noting that you may not need to use the front end testing decorator in very rare cases. However, in almost every instance where you write a front end function, you probably need to use one of the two decorators handle front end test or handle front end method. As the name may suggest, the handle front end test is used to test the front end functions, while handle front end method is used for methods of a class. Now, these decorators have a, uh, serve a critical purpose in the front end testing. By simplifying the testing process, they take away the complexity of generating all the testing data, leaving you with the task of generating the function or arguments only. Now, let's take a closer look at the handle front end test decorator. We will start by examining the arguments that are there and we dive later on on what they actually do. So first, we need to provide the function tree. So the function tree is the full function access path in the front end framework. If we are testing an apps function in TensorFlow, it would like uh, it would look like TensorFlow.math.apps. In a more complex situation for the JAX framework, you need to specify uh, JAX.lax.numpy.mathematicalfunctions.absolute, which is basically where the function exists in the original framework. Now, in some cases, we actually need to also provide an aliases. You can leave this one. Uh, you can leave this one empty most of the time, but in the case of TensorFlow.math.apps, you can actually use this function in two ways. So you can access it using TensorFlow.math.apps, and you can also access it using TensorFlow.draw.ops.apps. So if if there exists an, an an alias of the function we are testing. We should provide it in the hand uh, in the aliases arguments. 
Now, the third argument is the number of positional arguments. And this one is a strategy to defining the number of arguments to be passed as positional arguments. Most of the time, you should use this one and leave it as the default value. Um, unless you are actually trying to debug your test, you can use a custom strategy like passing st.just um, and giving it the value zero. In this way, it will basically tell the test um, pipeline to, to pass all the keyword, all the arguments as keyword arguments and not any as a position argument. Now, the next set of flags, we already visited this one in the testing uh, deep dive, but um, it's worth mentioning that we should most of the time use the default values for each of these strategies, unless you have a good reason to um, override these values. We also see an example of when you should override these values later on. Now, the last argument is the given keywords and this basically refers to the arguments that we want to pass in down the list uh, down the tree to the given decorator the hypothesis given decorator now this most of the time are actually all of the time must be a search strategy so it could be using one of IV strategies like helpers the d type and values uh, it could be your own custom strategy or it could be even a hypothesis strategy. Now, moving into handle front and method decorator, you can see it's already similar to the handle front and test decorator. So, at first, the class tree is the full class path in IV front ends. And this, one's, this one points to the class we want to test. So, in the case of Torch, we want to test the torch tensor, so we pass the class tree to be iv.functional the front end the torch to tensor. Now, in most cases, we actually do not use the class directly to construct an object of an instance of that class. We most of the time use a function, a helper function, to actually create that class. So, in the case of numpy, if you want to create a numpy in the array, you would actually use a numpy.array function, which returns an ng array uh, instance. So in the next, in the second argument, we basically define um, the function we actually use in the original uh, in the front end to create um, an instance of the class. Now. For the third argument, obviously the method name. So this is the method we are trying to test. Um, it could be um, as simple as the apps function, the apps method, or it could be something more complex. Now, all the other few, uh, all the other arguments you may already be familiar with. Um, you can see that all the first three arguments here are specific to the initialize function method we uh we are gonna run and also the uh, the next set of three arguments are specific to the mess uh, the method test flags you can also see that the given keywords here is similar to the previous decorator is the keyword arguments for hypothesis given decorator so why do we bother using the front end decorators and what value do they provide to us we will explore this now and also have a look at some of the examples of the front end tests. So the first reason why this is really important to use the decorators is that they nicely encapsulate most of the testing flags in only one object. So you can see here that there is about um, six arguments that are being hidden on only one test flag object. In this way, our testing function is more compact, more cleaner, and it hides away all the stuff that you shouldn't look at and that is not important to you. So the first example we can see here that we are testing a tent function from the TensorFlow front end, and we provide the function tree to be tensorflow.method10 and 
to generate the input to this function, which is basically an array, we use our helper function dtype and values. Now we can see that we actually override the value for the test flag strategy test without to be just false. And the reason for that, that tensorflow.math.tan does not support the out arguments. So we are telling our helper test front end function here to not try and test the without argument on this function because it does not support it. And this is one of the cases when you actually should override the default value for the strategy. So we can also see here that in the case of the handle front end method, we are actually encapsulating away and hiding all the details of different nine arguments in only three arguments. In this way, you can see that the already the front end method uh, testing function is uh, taking a lot of lines and is not easy to read. So if you actually went ahead by passing all these parameters by ourselves, we'll end up having a really long test function, which in most cases, you don't care about all of these arguments to be exposed to you. Now, if we look at the handle front end method decorator, and we are testing um, a TensorFlow constant um, class with a method add. So the method, the special method dunder add is basically the operator add. And this is the way we actually implement this in Python. So to be able to test this operator works perfectly fine. We first go ahead and define the class tree to be the eager tensor which is the class representation in TensorFlow. But in TensorFlow, we actually do not use the eager tensor class to construct the, the tensor we want to use, but instead we use a helper function called tensorflow.constant. So we define this in the init tree. And also we want to test the method add. So we pass the name of the method here. Now the method add actually operates on two arrays so you um, in the operator the left side um, is an array and also the right side is most of the times also an array but remember we actually uh, using um, we are trying to test a class here so the constructor will one of the arrays will be used for the constructor and one will be used for the add method because the add method basically takes one argument as self our um, basically the array you are calling the operator on and the other argument to be another element. So we generate two arrays here and we also specify the D type to be shared. And if we go down and look at the function body uh, for the test, we can see that we are passing the keyword arguments uh, for the constructor to be the first array we generated, and we also passing the method argument to be uh, the second array we generated. Now, another good reason why we should also use the decorators, that the decorators actually allows us to use, to sample um, D types that are supported by our front end function, and not try to sample any arbitrary data types. So, we should uh, we can assume that tensorflow.ones only accept integers and it doesn't make sense to really test the, the front end function with for example complex d types or flow d types because we know this one will fail for sure now the get d types when used with the decorator we actually only sample the function specific d types so in this case, if you call the helpers the git types um, in this this function, it will only sample the D types that are supported for tensorflow.ones. And in that way, we don't waste many examples running uh, tests that we are know that we know are gonna fail, um, but instead um, spend more time generating uh, D types that we care about testing. And as you can see here, there's an, another example of testing the front end function. We are testing the tensorflow ones, and we are generating the shape and D type parameter for this function. 
All right, so that was it. Um, so thanks everyone for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord server and um, ask any questions there. Anyways, have a great day and see you later.